conditioning. Operant conditioning differs from classical conditioning in that operant conditioning teaches subjects to associate behaviors with their consequences. That means the subject acts first and the environment responds with consequences to the action. In classical conditioning, on the other hand, the environment acts first by triggering or eliciting a response from the subject. According to the principles of operant conditioning, behaviors are more likely to be repeated if they are followed by reinforcement or something that would provide an incentive to do it again, and less likely to be repeated if they are followed by punishment. The principles of acquisition, extinction, spontaneous recovery, generalization, and discrimination all apply to operant conditioning too. So, if you didn't catch their meaning when we went over classical conditioning, go back and check it out again. Be kind to your mind. Rewind. B.F. Skinner is the big kahuna of operant conditioning. Skinner expanded on the work of a guy named Thorndike, whose law of effect says that people are more likely to do things when the consequences feel good. Roger. Thanks so much for washing my car. You've made me so happy. I just can't thank you enough. I'll wash it again. Oh, the consequences feel so good. So tomorrow you'll pick all the fleas and ticks off my dog? Skinner designed the Skinner box, which is a chamber containing a bar that an animal can press to get a food pellet, and a device to record how fast and how often the animal presses the bar. Skinner used his Skinner box to experiment with teaching animals, like rats and pigeons, to do weird behaviors in order to get food, a reward. The animal would typically have to press a bar, which is a weird behavior for a rat or a bird, and it would get a food pellet. Have you figured out what the humans want us to do with the bar yet? Nope, it's still a mystery to me. Hell with it. Let's play poker. To get the animals to perform like he wanted them to, for instance, to get the rats to press the bar in the Skinner box, Skinner used shaping, which is rewarding behaviors that come close to the behavior he was looking for. Behaviors that come close to and lead up to the desired behavior are called successive approximations. For example, if you want to shape bar pressing behavior in rats, you start by rewarding a natural behavior. Like when the rat goes near the bar, you give it a food pellet. Once the rat has learned that going near the bar will get it a reward, the food pellet, then you only reward it when it actually touches the bar. After the rat learns that touching the bar gets it a reward, then you start only rewarding it when it presses the bar. Next thing you know, the desired behavior has been shaped through successive approximations. You know, I'd gladly let my behavior be shaped and all that. But couldn't you tell this Skinner butthead to give me something a little tastier than food pellets once in a while? Like a double quarter pounder with cheese. Mm. Remember, operant conditioning is different from classical conditioning. Because in operant conditioning, the subject acts first, then you get a response from the environment. If the subject likes the response, then he will probably repeat the behavior. So far, we've been referring to the things or events that make a subject want to repeat a behavior as rewards. Actually, the more precise term is reinforcer. Some reinforcers are like rewards, but some are not. We'll explain. Primary reinforcers are like rewards. They can be food, or an hour extra sleep in the morning, or something that feels good and is satisfying all by itself. Secondary reinforcers, on the other hand, are not satisfying all by themselves. Subjects have to learn that secondary reinforcers are worth repeating a behavior. Things like money and concert tickets are secondary reinforcers. The money and the tickets themselves are not a lot of fun, but you can buy fun stuff with the money, and you can see a show if you have the tickets. All the reinforcement we've talked about so far is called positive reinforcement. This kind of reinforcement gives the subject something like food, concert tickets, or whatever, to make it more likely that a behavior will be repeated. 
there's also negative reinforcement, which is not what we typically think of as a reward at all, but it does make the subject want to repeat the behavior. Negative reinforcement reinforces behavior by taking away something unpleasant. For example, a rat in a Skinner box may learn that pressing the bar stops the electrical current that's going through the floor of the box. This is negative reinforcement because the bar pressing behavior is reinforced when the pain of the electrical current stops. Despite all my thoughts, I am still just a rat in a box. Negative reinforcement is often confused with punishment, but it's really not at all like punishment. Punishment is something that discourages the subject from repeating a behavior. Any kind of reinforcement encourages a subject to repeat a behavior. Don't think of the terms negative as bad and positive as good in the case of reinforcement. Remember that positive reinforcement means giving something good to increase the likelihood of behavior. And negative reinforcement means taking away something that's bad to increase the likelihood of behavior. So, like we said, the effect of punishment is the opposite of reinforcement. It's an unpleasant event that decreases a behavior or response. But overall, it doesn't work very well. Punished behavior is suppressed, but it isn't forgotten. For example, if a kid gets spanked for picking his nose, he may just make sure he doesn't do it again around his parents. Instead, he may do it in a safe atmosphere where no authority figures can catch him. Also, punishment sometimes backfires by increasing unwanted responses like fear and aggression. Most importantly, it doesn't encourage desired behavior. So, there are two types of associative or stimulus response learning. Classical conditioning and operant conditioning. Now, don't get confused about the difference between the two. In classical conditioning, the environment provides a stimulus and the subject responds. Like when Pavlov's dogs heard the tone first, then they started to salivate. In operant conditioning, the subject acts first, then the environment responds. And if the subject likes the response, it will probably repeat the behavior. Now, in the case of Skinner's rats, the rat presses the bar first, then it gets a food pellet. Since the rat likes the food pellet, it'll press the bar again. 